This is the Laurel WS400B 6NPP Lite photo resist spinner. The spinner is made with materials that do not degrade or generate particles. The bowl shaped interior forces fluid downward where it is routed directly to rear drains. The upper plenum closes inside the base providing an overlapping seal. A proprietary motor seal protects the motor and control electronics from chemical contaminants. The WS400 digital controller has 20 programs. The unit is powered by 120 volts AC. The process chamber is approximately eight and a half inches in diameter. The unit is rated for a maximum RPM of 6,000. However, there are certain specific models that will reach 8,000 RPM. Let me give you a demonstration. Now the unit requires connections for both vacuum and for a purge. Uh, typically this purge can be nitrogen um, and it should be between 60 to 70 PSI. If it is n below 60 PSI, it will give you a warning on the control panel letting you know that you do not have sufficient purge. The same with the vacuum. If the vacuum is too low, it will also alert you as well. Typically the vacuum needed is from a uh, vacuum diaphragm pump and uh, a pump that achieves between 20 and 25 inches of mercury is sufficient. First we'll open it up here. This particular chuck has an accessory for a very small workpiece on top and then underneath another one. Uh, the unit can actually accommodate um, from six inch down to very small wafers. I'm going to use this little guy here for our demonstration. Uh, as you can see on this particular wafer, I have a timing mark that will allow us to monitor the speed uh, with an infrared tachometer as to confirm that it is actually spinning at that speed. So I'm gonna put my nice little adapter here that is a perfect size for this little wafer here. This is our infrared tachometer. It's right now it's at zero RPM. It's a little tricky, but I'll show you folks. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to run one of the programs that'll show you the full range of speeds. So I'm gonna select program B, and we're gonna start off at 1,000 RPMs, and in increments of 1,000, go from one to 8,000, and then back down again. We're gonna again monitor it both here on its display and on our infrared tech out. Now, you might have to read this upside down, folks but it does work very well. There's a thousand, and there's a thousand here on the display. Now we have 2,000, 2,000 on the display. 3,000, that's good. Four thousand. Five thousand. Six thousand. Is 
7,000. Eight thousand. Drop back down to seven thousand. Six thousand. Five thousand. Four thousand. Three thousand. Two thousand. One thousand. And back down to zero. controller is very simple to use. As I mentioned before, it has, you can program 20 different programs from A, B, C, all the way through different, all the way to T and back to A again. So that's 20 different programs. Uh, it's easy to program this unit. Um, for example, If you wanted to change the speed in one of your programs, it's as simple as cursing over to where you want to make a change, and then you can change the value down, let's say. We'll change this to a 1,000, and we'll move over one spot, and we'll make that a 1, and we'll enter that. <clears throat> and then when you return to the program, it'll spin at that speed. In the same respect, you can change your uh, delete steps. Uh, for example, the program that I just used for the demonstration um, had 16 steps. You can set these up any way you want, uh, as many steps as you want within the 20 different programs. Uh, here, we use this one for example. Once the lid is raised and lowered, it resets it, and we still have good vacuum. Now this is a very slow acceleration that I have going here right now. As you can see, it just gets up to 3,000. So you can set all the different acceleration speeds as well. <clears throat> you can also delete, so you can add a step, delete a step, you can uh, progress through the different steps. It's really, really very simple to use. And that completes this demonstration.